Hello students, now it's time to learn about the five important laws that allows us to understand the way in which the chemical species react in a chemical reactions. So let's understand the laws of the different laws of chemical combination. Now let's understand the uh, laws of chemical combination, <coughs> the laws which govern the chemical combinations. Okay, so let's discuss about it. So what are the laws of chemical combination? We have five laws, laws of chemical combination we have. One is law of conservation of mass, law of definite proportions, law of multiple proportions, law of reciprocal, reciprocal proportions and Gay-Lussac's law of combining volumes. So five laws we are going to discuss. We are going to learn about these five laws. So in this part, I will discuss about the first three laws, first three laws and the last two laws I will discuss in the next part. Okay. So first let us see what is the law of conservation of mass. Law of conservation of mass says that the total mass of the product remains equal to the total mass of the reactants. Okay. So which, which is depends upon like the mass is neither created not destroyed okay so since mass is neither created nor destroyed the total mass of the product the total mass of the products they should always be equal to the total mass of the reactants okay so if you take the pro reactants so if you take a chemical reaction with hydrogen and chlorine reacting together and they forming hydrogen chloride so here uh, calculate the total mass of the reactants and total mass of the products and those two will be equal. So here hydrogen 2 grams, chlorine this is 71 grams, 1 mole, 1 mole we are taking. So we are getting 2 moles, so that is 73 grams we are getting. So the total mass of the reactants is 73 and the total mass of the products is also 73 grams. Okay. So there is no any change, change of mass during the reaction. The total mass of the reactants are equal to products. So this law is used to balance any chemical reaction. If you take this chemical reaction, the methane reacts with oxygen and is forming carbon dioxide and water. Here, this reaction is balanced according to the law of conservation of mass. Okay. So what will do is what whatever may the number of atoms of one particular type on the left hand side, they should be equal to the the number of atoms of that type in the right hand side. Okay. So one carbon we have on left hand side. So in the reactants, so one carbon should also there in the products. Okay. So in this way, we balance any chemical reaction that is based upon the law of conservation of mass. Okay. So now let's discuss about the second law. The second is the law of definite proportions. The law of definite proportions. So what does this law states? Let's see. A chemical compound always contains the same elements combined together in the same proportion of mass. So if you take any particular compound irrespective of the source from which it is obtained it always contains the same set of elements in the same ratio of their masses. Okay. So let us take an example for that to understand this law. See if I take water so this is ice, ice water ice which whose chemical composition is H2O it contains H2O, H2O mo molecules. So here the 2 grams of hydrogen is reacted with eight, 16 grams of oxygen. So we have the 1 is to 8 this is the mass ratio of hydrogen and oxygen in ice water. Okay. So here hydrogen and oxygen are combined in this, in this ratio of their mass. So if you take the river water it is also have the same, num the same elements hydrogen and oxygen which are combined in the same ratio of their mass. Okay. So Similarly, if you see in sea water, sea water also going to contain hydrogen and oxygen which are combined in this the same ratio. Okay? So what it says that if you see the water and irrespective of the source from where you are seeing, here you are seeing ice water, this is river water, this is sea water. But the compound that water, the chemical compound water is always containing the same elements hydrogen and oxygen which are combined in the same proportion of mass that is 1 gram hydrogen and 8 grams oxygen 8 grams oxygen we have so this ratio is always fixed and the elements are also fixed okay so that's why 
this law is known as law of definite proportions okay so let's discuss let's go to the third one that is the law of multiple proportions this law states that when the two elements they combine to form two or more than two different compounds then the different masses of one element which combine with which combines with the fixed mass of the other element bear a simple ratio to one another okay so let's understand this statement by taking an example okay so if you see let's take carbon monoxide in carbon monoxide the two we have two elements one is carbon and other is oxygen so these two elements they are forming two compounds so here they are forming two compounds so some elements they form more than two compounds okay so the different masses of one element which combine with the fixed mass of other element so here we have carbon monoxide one carbon we have and one oxygen and we have one carbon we have and two oxygens we have right so here what is that element that has a different mass here in this case oxygen right here the same mass the carbon only one atom is reacted in both the cases so this is the, the fixed mass of element that is carbon the different mass of one element that is oxygen okay so different masses so here it is oxygen is 16 grams and here it is 32 grams 32 grams right so the different masses of one element which is combining with the fixed mass of the other element the bear a simple ratio to one another so here this is the fixed mass and this different mass there's a simply the base is simple ratio to one another okay so here 16 32 which is a 6 16 32 is simply a 2 times 16 right so which is a simple ratio okay so this is the law of multiple proportions another example you can see NO and NO2 we have this is fixed mass of one element and this is the different mass of other element that is oxygen and it is one atom that is 16 grams and here it is two atoms 32 grams so in this case see this is the the different masses of one element which is combining with the same mass of the this element okay and these two ratios they simply the the simple ratio to one another okay so this is 16 and this is 32 which basis simple ratio to one another okay so this is about the law of multiple proportions so in this part we discussed about three laws one is law of conservation of mass other is law of definite proportion and other is the law of multiple proportions okay we learn with the examples now we'll see a video demonstration on the three laws of chemical combination one is law of conservation of mass other is law of constant proportion and other is law of multiple proportion so to understand it better let's see a video presentation so first thing we're going to learn about the law of conservation of mass law of conservation of mass so this law is given by Anthony Laurent Lavoisier. Anthony Laurent Lavoisier. This law of conservation of mass is given by. So which says that in a chemical reaction, so this is the mass of the products is equals to the mass of the reactants which are involved. The, the mass of those things are equal. So this law states that mass cannot be neither created nor destroyed in a chemical reactions. It cannot be created or it cannot be destroyed and mass of the reactants the total mass of the reactants equals to the total mass of the products so to understand this law let's take an example in this example example will take that uh, magnesium is reacting with oxygen and it is forming magnesium oxide this is the example that we're taking so here if you see the two magnesium atoms will react with one uh, oxygen molecule and it forms two formula units of magnesium oxide okay so like this is two moles will combine with one mole it will give you two moles right so let's see uh, about this reaction so here the one mole of magnesium is equals to uh, 24 grams the one mole of magnesium so if you take two moles it's 48 grams so similarly if you take oxygen if you take these many particles of oxygen that is Avogadro number of uh, molecules of hydrogen its molar mass is equals to 32 grams we are taking one mole of oxygen so we are taking two moles of magnesium and one mole of oxygen the total mass is equals to 48 plus 32 which is equal to 80 the 80 is the the, the mass of the reactants so 
similarly we can also see the mass of the products that is the product is MgO the one mole of MgO weighs 40 grams but you have two moles so total mass of the products is equals to 40 plus 40 that is 80 so the mass of the reactants is 80 and the mass of the products is also equals to 80 so we can say that the total mass of the reactants is equals to the, the total mass of the products so similarly here you can see the number of magnesium atoms on the left hand side on the left hand side equals on the right hand side similarly the number of oxygens on the left hand side equal to right hand side so this is also according to the law of conservation of mass which says that mass cannot be created it cannot be destroyed the total mass of the reactants is always equal to the total mass of the products in any chemical reaction okay let's move on now let's discuss about the law of constant proportion so this law of constant proportion is given by joseph louis prost joseph louis prost and is also known as law of definite proportions law of definite proportion which says that in a chemical compound the elements are always present in different proportion by mass in definite proportion by mass that is fixed proportion by mass so if you take water h2o which is formed by the combination of oxygen and hydrogen will if you take the water if you take the water that is collected from well or spring or river this water irrespective of the source it contains the same elements which are combined in the same ratio so let's take this example the water if you see water which is a which is containing h2o molecules so if you take one particular h2o molecule it is containing two hydrogen atoms and oxygen is one oxygen atom it is containing so the mass of two hydrogen atoms is two grams and the mass of one oxygen atom is 16 grams so you can see the mass of two hydrogens is equals to two grams the relative atomic mass and it is 16 grams so two grams of hydrogen is combined with the 16 grams of what uh, oxygen and it is formed 18 grams of water okay so the 2 plus 16 this is the ratio in which the hydrogen and oxygen are combined with each other that is 2 by 16 that is 1 is to 8 so this is the ratio of oxygen to ratio of hydrogen to oxygen in water which is fixed irrespective of the source from which you collected the water so this is this is known as the law of constant proportion now let's discuss about the law of multiple proportions so this law is given by john dalton john dalton so here if you see uh, yeah if you see what this law says that the, if the two elements if they're combining and they're forming more than one compound then the ratio of the elements which combine with the, the fixed mass of the other element will be a simple ratio to each other so here if you see the one atom is combining with one atom and two atoms of A is combining with one atom of B and three atoms of A one and four atoms of A is combining with one atom of B. So in all these four we have only one atom of B that means the amount of B present is same fixed amount of B is present but A is only varying. So if you see this ratio here one atom of A one atom of B the ratio is one is to one here the ratio is what B is to A is one is to two one is to three one is to four all are simple ratios that means the ratio the ratio uh, of the oxygen like not only oxygen like the the different mass of the elements that combined with the fixed mass of the element will be in a simple ratio so to understand it further let's take one more example here the high concentration oxygen combines with carbon and it forms carbon dioxide so if oxygen is taken in less concentration it forms carbon monoxide so we have carbon monoxide so in carbon monoxide 12 parts by mass of carbon is combining with the 16 parts by mass of oxygen so in co2 the 12 percent by mass of uh, carbon is combining with the 32 parts by mass of oxygen so the ratio of mass of oxygen in these two compounds is 16 is to 32 right that is the simple ratio 1 is to 2 the ratio of oxygen in both the cases so if you say in these two uh, compounds c1 oxygen the mass of the carbon is fixed that is 12 and uh, oxygen mass is varying that is in 1 in c it is 16 in c 2 it is 32 so the ratio of the oxygen in these two compounds is simple that is equals to 16 is to 32 that is 1 is to 2 which is a simple ratio so this is the law of multiple proportions this is the law of multiple proportion an example we have taken the carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide
Okay, so this is all about the law of conservation of mass, the law of definite proportions, and law of multiple proportions. While studying this chapter, if you get any doubts, you can post it for free on askitians.com. How? First, open the website, and if you open, if you see at the top, at the top right, you'll see a discussion board. So simply click on that. It will take you to the next screen. Yeah. In the next screen, you will see the Ask Experts, a separate section on the right hand side. So select a relevant category for your question and simply post your question here. We experts at Ask ITNs will provide answers to your questions within 24 to 48 hours. So students, in this part, we discussed about the first three laws of chemical combination. First one is the law of conservation of mass, second one is the law of definite proportion and third one is law of multiple proportions. We learned these things with proper examples. So stay tuned to get to know about the rest two laws which I will discuss in my next part.